going to showcase another interesting project that I've created for myself, which is a self-supervised learning CNN or convolutional neural network. Uh, as I've stated before numerous times, my kind of like my base programming, my base OS is that I'm an engineer and I like to learn by reverse engineering things, right? By taking things apart. And then when I reverse engineer them, I like to put them back together better than I found them. And, and then once I can do that, uh, to me, that's mastery of it, right? Like if I can if I fully take it apart and then not only reproduce it and reverse engineer it like worse than before, that's not an actual understanding of it, right? Putting it together and then reverse engineering it better than before, that it denotes like you actually understand what you, you took apart. And so I like to get to that level. And then within that, uh, kind of uh, big for a lot of reasons where we're at, like this uh, self-supervised concept is very big within neural networks right now, which is why it um, fascinates me a lot, right? And then the first thing I want to do is just before we get into anything, just showcase the results for you. So this took two hours to train. I'm not going to train this model in real time during this video uh, because I, it took two hours to train it. But this, I took it. Did, this took two hours to train from scratch, and it would not need to be trained again. It will, uh, like on this MNIST fashion, or on this MNIST numbers data set. This is an MNIST fashion, but on this MNIST data set. Uh, it's going to score like almost flawlessly. You can see the, the reconstruction is uh, exactly where I would want it to be. There's some like minor reconstruction errors on the five and the nine uh, and a little bit on the four on that second four. But I mean, this is uh, phenomenal. <laughs> like this is uh, uh, money uh, and it only took two hours of training overall. So train and train this on CPU only and for free in Google Colab. And I have my own uh, Convert, uh, convolutional neural network now that's fully trained, right? Like it's, it's all good to go. This is a good neural network. Um, it's two years ago, you'd be paying a lot of money for this, right? Uh, and then that's kind of where we're at. Like, so that's one thing that I want to showcase within this is the, the, the progression, uh, and, and showcase progression within this, um, as to where we're at. But secondarily within that, I want to talk about what this progression actually means right like what i'm actually doing within this so what i'm actually doing within this to me very straightforward the concept is is so it's very big right now you see like uh models like oh uh gpt 03 and like all of these models that are coming out right and the big revolution that they're doing is they're taking advantage of this concept called test time compute and then it's kind of cheating overall, right, is how I look at this test time compute concept, but uh, it's a very powerful concept. And what it means is that, like, it, given any problem, uh, if I'm given a long enough timeline and enough, and enough compute to figure out that problem, I'll figure out the problem. And so, for example, utilizing this particular instance, right, this would be an instance of test time compute. If I uh, wanted to test this model on this particular data set and on this experiment that we're doing, give me two hours and enough compute <laughs> and enough training of the model, and I'll get you a flawless result, right? It's going to take two hours, and that two hours is, is what you're paying for in, in your compute time, but it's test time compute, right? Uh, don't give me the two hours, it's, it's going to fail. Give me the two hours and it's going to pass. And then so it's uh, how how do you equate that? It's kind of cheating the system, right? And then so, and uh, I think a lot of my uh, research benchmarks and things like that. So because of this concept, right, what I'm noticing a lot more that I'm getting with requirements for algorithms is my requirements are starting to have this built in. Like, okay, it's cool that you can build an algorithm that does X, but we need an algorithm that does X that doesn't take two hours. <laughs> and then, uh, so it, the people are starting to understand this equation and understand uh, like this test time compute concept and, and move past it and understand it as like a cheater concept overall. It's really the best way that I can frame it, right? And why I consider it a cheater concept is very simplistically, there's an article in Nature that I read this morning, right? That uh, very simplistically stated that the bottleneck of the human brain boils down to 10 bits of information, meaning that like at its uh, slowest point, your brain is processing 10 bits uh, of information at one time, which means that uh, your brain is getting outperformed by the... Uh, by a circuit on a calculator.
in terms of processing power in that particular instance, right? Um, but so that's the, the, the raw pause processing power required to do these things. Like what is the, the processing power required to do this? 10 bits, because you can do it with the human brain at 10 bits, right? But if I throw a GPT, GPT 4.0 at it, <laughs> then that's a little bit different, right? It's, it's, it's throwing compute at it. It's, it's, it's like a, taking a shotgun to the problem, right? Like, it's like, okay, I just take a shotgun to everything and then boom, boom, boom. Yes, my shotgun's going to work. Um, but shotgun isn't the best approach, right? But shotgun works. And then that's kind of the bottom line within this and why I'm showcasing this and, and why this is a cool experiment to me, right? Like I can knock shotgun all I want, but, but if the if it's shotgun or no shotgun, give me the shotgun uh, and then we'll figure out from there. I can reverse engineer from there, right? And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Give me the shotgun. Let me figure out how the shotgun works, what it's spreading, what exactly it's shooting, how its ammo works. And then let's reverse engineer that and let's uh, make a more tactical weapon <laughs> or, or let's make it more tactical and not a weapon uh, would be the better way, a better approach, right? But so diving into uh, this code that we're looking at very specifically uh, and, and this model, just breaking it down as to how it works. So very simplistically, what I'm doing is it's all law in the data preparation, right? So I load this data set uh, and then I, uh, first of all, I load the data set and then I, um, I have to size it. So I size it 28 by 28 um, is the size. And then I have to add another dimension to that. So I add in one. And then we need to, uh, within the data augmentation feature, I'm essentially like adding randomness to these images, right? Because so this data set is labeled, but I'm, you'll see later on, I'm very explicitly <laughs> excluding the labels from the data set. And then the model's just being trained on the images. But so if I just train it on the images itself, that's not very much, right? So randomly it'll flip an image, it'll augment an image, it'll change an image, etc. crop an image. And then, so that's what's going on with this here, right? Just saying like randomly do stuff to distort images <laughs> this model's being trained on. So it'll train better at noise. Uh, and then we have our encoders. So we have our encoder and our decoder. Uh, and then again, this is a convolutional neural network. So it takes these images and then puts them down into 2D images. And then from there, that's where it's doing everything, that 28 by 28, right? 28 by 28, 2D. And then uh, then it's uh, same thing here. We're scaling to different dimensions with it's still 2D dimensions, uh, but then we're scaling to different sizes uh, and then decoding the different sizes. Like really how I look at this process here, uh, this is where the magic happens to me, right? This is why you do this. So like, what's the approach for doing this? Uh, A is once I train this network and it's ready to go, I don't have to do the two hours anymore, right? It's just boom, 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 and it gets it. And then, so why would you utilize this method as opposed to your method. So my method is A, faster, a billion times faster once it's trained, right? Once we account for that two hours and get that two hours out of the way and we pay that two hours, then the cost is unlimited. It's, it's rapid, right? Uh, and then the second thing is, is that to store these images, I don't have to store the whole image and I don't have to give the whole entire image to the decoder model. I only need to give the decoder model like the bolts of the image essentially so not only am i able to do this faster after you pay the two hours <laughs> but i'm also able to store the images uh, in a much more compact way than you would able ever be able to do via any other method so more compact and faster model and then from here, uh, we just essentially separate the encodings and then we want to uh, measure that loss. And loss is the difference, that reconstruction difference between the original image and the reconstructed image. And then we want to minimize that, right? So all throughout training, that's what we're doing. And then so we're just doing, we're creating ways to uh, measure the image and measure the loss of the image. And then that's what we're doing here. We have a bunch of different math and a bunch of different ways, uh, just a bunch of different methods that are all checking each other, <laughs> that all add up and all stack to make sure that we can measure this loss 100% accurately and efficiently uh, as possible. And we go through and then we have uh, our uh, custom layer to bring that all back together. So that's still with regards. <laughs> all of this is like all here uh, is uh, down from up uh, all the way up here is all just math with regards towards the, the um, reconstructing and, and constructing the image. 
Uh, and then once we once we do that, we need to reconstruct the image, and then we want to do our evaluation metrics, and then we want to plot out those metrics, uh, and then we want to show the images that you're seeing that are being printed out here. So very simplistically, that's what the code is doing here, and that's what we're looking at. And then so if you let this run for two hours in and of itself, you'll have this network saved. You could run this locally uh, and then save it so you'll have your own little local CNN that you could run, and it's an image classifier. You could modify this, do whatever you want, train it on different data, self supervise it on different data sets, right? So take your own data uh, and self-supervise it. That's the beauty of this, right? Like, so uh, what's the real world use case of this? Let's say you're a corporation and you do this with your data. You pay this two hour cost. Uh, it, like, Assuming, let's say you have receipt data, invoice data, I don't know, like I'm just using the common examples that you would utilize uh, for something like this, uh, the, the repeatable examples, uh, and then you train it on your data, you put that two hours in, uh, you, you aren't going to have to put the two hours in and, and again after that, right? So you're, uh, you're paying like all of your compute costs like upfront, essentially, like you're saying like I'm going to pay two hours uh, and then after that I get the best model ever uh, for these particular image type tasks. And that's what we're looking at here. Um, and then, so I'll leave a link to uh, this code. Feel free to modify it. Feel free to do anything that you like with it. Uh, it's a full blown CNN and self supervised CNN. Uh, just change the data set, change anything that you want as far as the optimizer. I'm just using standard, standard Atom, <laughs> very standard uh, metrics uh, to tune this, right? I just wanted to see uh, how it performed. And it performs flawlessly just off of standard metrics. Like you could obviously tune this better. <laughs> like there's ways like this nine and this five could be, uh, there's ways to optimize this. Uh, but I mean, to me, this is good enough for my testing. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.